Well, I won't lie. The pressure is officially on me. When I finished the whole entire Demon Slayer scene in Mount Nanagumo, I thought, okay, so it seems like everyone is in agreement that this scene was awesome, especially the fight between Tanjiro vs. Rui. How can I make a video essay about this scene that'll stand out? And to my surprise, there's basically no video essay about this. Huh. I thought such a big scene would have more videos on it. But no matter. In this video essay, we go over all that I loved about this Demon Slayer scene and why it's one of the best scenes I've ever seen in entertainment history. And a little P.S. We even go over the valuable life lesson it teaches you and I. What exactly makes a good fight? Well, I feel like everyone's favorite fight scene always just comes down to preference. Some people love action scenes that focus heavily on how well animated or edited it is, if it's flashy and electrifying. Some people care about fights that have a deep meaning behind it, that move the story forward, that truly challenge the fighters to become something stronger. Most of us probably like a bit of both. There's really no wrong answer. In fact, this video essay honestly is just a bit of my preference on what makes a good fight, but maybe you won't agree with it. So again, a good fight really just comes down to how you like it. What exactly did I see in this fight that I truly enjoyed that hopefully, maybe, you guys could agree with? I noticed it had a mixture of three things, and the first thing being unpredictability. There's a reason I'm mentioning this, but... Demon Slayer holds a special place in my heart because it's actually the first ever manga series I ever read. And I won't lie, I had a bit of trouble with it at times. I hope this doesn't sound bad, but I think there were a lot of Japanese names to keep up with that was something I wasn't used to yet. And though the drawings are very well made, sometimes it was a bit visually cluttering for me to where I couldn't quite understand what was happening but after I felt like I finally got the gist of how the series worked, this fight proved me wrong. The fight starts out with four characters, Tanjiro, Nezuko, Inosuke, and Zenitsu, on their way to Mount Natagumo to fight, well, demons. Zenitsu doesn't want to come because he's scared, Inosuke can't wait to feel empowered and fight, and Tanjiro knows what's at stake for his sister, so those three go up the mountain to fight. Okay, I get that part. I understand these characters' personalities and motives for the most part. Then we see some other demon slayers tangled up in webs trying to fight and are introduced to these spider-like demons. Okay, interesting. So we already see a bit of what these demons' powers are. Not long after, we're introduced to two Hashira, Giyu Tamiyoka and Shinobu Kocho. They're sent to go up the mountain to help out the struggling demon slayers. Okay, I even get that, because the manga covers told me eventually we'd be introduced to them, so I wasn't really shocked. After all that, though, it gets interesting. We then are introduced to Rui, who talks about his quote-unquote family. Huh, interesting. I thought demons hated each other, so already I'm questioning where this is going. But to be honest, something already fell off with all of their ages. Like, the mother of the group sure is as close of an age as Rui. It's also interesting that despite being a family, the demon seemed to be scared of Rui, like he's some sort of threat. Also, Rui starts threatening his own mother. That's interesting. I wasn't expecting to feel sympathy for a demon while having another conversation with a demon. Oh, huh, speaking of something being threatening, I sure as hell wasn't expecting Inosuke to actually feel scared and threatened, and he also starts to think to himself and strategize what his next move will be? I thought he was all about arrogance and power. Zenitsu shocked me that he actually becomes angry instead of just being scared. The emotional twists and turns sure as hell weren't something I could predict coming, but it's not just the emotions and the weird setups and demons being a quote-unquote family. I'm also thinking, what the? I thought Inosuke started to understand what teamwork is about. Why is he throwing Tanjiro super far away? Oh, okay. So he can reach the mother demon. All right, time for an epic kill from Tanjiro. Oh, the demon wants to die. Oh, I thought she'd fight back a little bit. And then fast forward a little bit to Hashira Giyu and Shinobu. 
They're saying that they don't get along? So even demon slayers don't get along. Interesting. Alright, anyway, time to see the epic teamwork kill from Inosuke and Tanjiro- Oh, Tanjiro was thrown away. Inosuke is left all by himself to face him in really bad condition. Then we see Tanjiro hear something horrible going on. Rui beating up his sister, and we feel sympathy for that demon as well. But Rui is basically defending his actions. Why? Aren't they a family? And then we cut to Inosuke, and he's being choked to death. Will he die? And Tanjiro, his sword didn't cut through the web. Won't he die? Okay. I think at this point we get it. I could go on and on about the unpredictability. The other fights prior to this were mostly predictable. Like, yeah, sure, the fights would bring forth a challenge to Tanjiro, but you kind of knew he was going to win in the end. And though the fight in Mount Nataguma was early in the story, you're supposed to think that our heroes don't die too soon. But I feel like this fight did do a good job in getting that into our head. But it's not just from unpredictability, it's also coming from our second point on why I think this fight is really amazing. The fight got intensified each time. Not to diss on other cinematic fights or anime fights, wherever you might watch action, but some fights you can think of don't truly challenge the fighters. To be honest with you, you don't have to look outside of Demon Slayer to show an example. Like I said earlier, yeah, some of the demons would throw in some jabs and super abilities here and there, but I don't think it got intense necessarily. The fights with Suzumaru and Yahaba, Kyogai, and even further back with that hand demon, like, not saying Tanjiro didn't struggle, but it just had a predictable outcome. Though, I will say, to be fair, those fights weren't as hard because they weren't a part of Muzan's 12 Kizuki, and maybe the Mount Natagumo fight got intense because it focused on challenging more than just Tanjiro and Nezuko, but anyway, this whole entire fight was increasingly harder for everyone. The sole fact that the group had to fight a quote-unquote family of demons, and that the spiderweb threads got stronger the closer you got to a demon is one thing, but this fight also felt like no matter what smart move one of the fighters thought of, they soon realized it wasn't smart enough. For example, Tanjiro and Inosuke think that throwing tangled up demon slayers onto trees saves them from being controlled by the mother demon. Technically it worked, but not that much, as the mother demon was still able to twist the necks of those demon slayers and kill them. Well, that plan didn't go quite as expected. Then, Tanjiro and Inosuke take down Mother Demon's strongest weapon. The demon doesn't even have a head, and they still prevailed. The problem is, they didn't even take down an even bigger demon. Father Demon proves to be much more of a threat. None of their moves and techniques seem to work on this guy. So, Tanjiro cuts down a tree that crushes Father Demon. Technically, that worked. All he's got to do is cut his head off and... Actually, no, that didn't quite work like planned, because Father Demon gets up and uses the tree to bat Tanjiro as far away as possible from Inosuke. So now the fight for Inosuke is intensified and challenged, as he for one thing is all alone, but is also seriously wounded. Luckily enough, though seriously wounded, Inosuke thinks of an idea. He'll use two swords to cut off limb by limb of a titanous demon, and that worked! The demon even runs away, only to shed its skin and get even bigger, I guess. Point is, the demon used its super ability to grow itself. Inosuke's plan worked, but not that well. Tanjiro is facing the first demon in the 12 Kizuki, which is a challenge on its own. But when I was reading the scene in the manga, I remember thinking to myself, oh my god, how does this guy die? But what makes this tougher on him is that his sword even gets cut. He's fighting with what feels like only an inch of a sword blade now. How the hell is he going to think of techniques and attacks on Rui now? The only way his sword can hit Rui is by getting head on with him. But don't Rui's threats get stronger the closer he gets to him? No matter, Tanjiro at least isn't alone as Nezuko comes in to save Tanjiro from an unavoidable attack from Rui. So now Nezuko has been entered into the arena. That's great. Only, 
she's officially not safe from harm, cause now Rui has used his webs to capture Nezuko and tangle her up into the air. Not to mention, Rui can tighten those threads and seriously wound Nezuko. At this point, Rui taunts Tanjiro, allowing him to attempt to cut his head off, only to prove that his sword isn't even going to be strong enough to cut off his head? Literally how? Isn't his sword designed to do that job? Okay, Tanjiro will need to step up his game. How about using Total Concentration, Water Breathing 10th Form Constant Flux? Hey, that works. He's cutting those threads now. Even though he had a broken sword, he found a solution. <sighs> But, of course, not for long, as Rui is able to use his blood demon art to strengthen those threads and trap Tanjiro in a web cage that'll shred him into pieces within seconds. So at this point, I'm thinking, is Tanjiro just f***ed? Like, how is Nesco even going to save him? Or even herself? Finally, though, the famous Hinukami Kagura gets unleashed to Tanjiro, Nezuko uses her blood demon art to strengthen Tanjiro's sword, and ultimately, they stop Rui. Or so they thought. Th there were just so many twists and turns for our heroes, and even for our demons. Rui had to think of different ways to stop Tanjiro, and the father demon had to think of something new to stop Inosuke. So it wasn't just the heroes being challenged, it was also the demons. Which, speaking of being challenged... This leads to the last point on why this fight was really amazing to me. Each character has powerful emotional moments. I've already sorta explained it, but I'll go further into it. Each character is faced with a mental and physical challenge, but they also never seem to lose sight of what it is that they truly want in their life. Or maybe they discover, or remember what it is that they truly want. Tanjiro and Nezuko are great examples of them not forgetting what it is they truly want at the end of the day. Starting with Tanjiro, he wants his sister to be protected and turned back into a human. That's his end goal. Tanjiro is a character that simply doesn't back down in a fight, and I think we got a very good glimpse of that in this fight. Like I said earlier, where seemingly any smart move or technique Tanjiro used to fight back, he's quickly outplayed by the demon's next attack. And you do start to see fear and panic enter his mind, and his facial expression turn frightened and worried. But, he never loses faith in his training. Even though his sword broke, and he keeps getting outplayed by demons, he continues to put faith in what Uro Kodaki taught him. He continues, to put belief in all those days and nights he trained up in the mountains will pay off. But not even just that, he doesn't even take back his beliefs either. Despite Rui threatening Tanjiro with his words, actions, and even going as far as to literally trap Nezuko in strong threads of web, he still doesn't take back what he said about how Rui isn't treating his family correctly. He believes that a family should love each other, and fight together, not harm and despise each other. And though Nezuko showed up for a short period of time, you got to see her stand up for herself and her end goal as well. Her end goal is also to be healthy and human, yet protect Tanjiro. And yeah, you did see her start to panic when Tanjiro is injured, but you also see her take a vicious hit to protect Tanjiro from an unavoidable attack. Now why do I mention something that sounds a bit obvious to do? Like protecting the ones you love and keeping your mindset strong and believing in yourself? Because, let's be honest, it's not as easy to do in the real world. So we more should look at these two characters as an example of what we should do when we get outsmarted in a fight. When someone uses fear to try and take back our beliefs. When our loved ones need our help to stay safe. But then there were some characters like Inosuke that go through a lot of personal change and discover, or remember, what it is they truly want. Inosuke is an interesting character to me because originally I didn't really like him while reading the manga. I felt like his personality and the overall idea of who he is, 
being a man basically born in the wild and essentially acting like a wild boar was just a bit much to me, but this very scene was enough for me to give him another look. He at first questions why humans are doing good things for him and saying good things to him. He came from cocky and arrogant to legitimately being frightened and scared. He actually uses his head and tries to strategize his next move rather than just attacking with no thought, basically. But perhaps the coolest form of development from him is seeing that he starts to kinda understand human nature, like what that old lady said to him, and Tanjiro relying on him. He's realizing that people need him, and he needs other people. Maybe he still shows a little bit of arrogance during the scene still, but he also starts using teamwork with Tanjiro, and even looks up to him and other people like Giyu. He sees what he truly wants, power and strength. Yeah, I know, he still says that he can do whatever Tanjiro can do and whatnot, but he like just is learning teamwork. He wasn't gonna change completely. It's just cool to see some development is all. I won't explain much from characters like Rui and Zenitsu for too long because I feel like we've kind of explained the point for a long time and I don't want this video running for too long, but they still had some cool moments to share as well. Rui used mostly fear to get what he wants and mostly feels empowered, but during the fight, he, like Inosuke, also starts to panic and feel threatened, and he remembers what it is he truly wants, forgiveness and a family. And Zenitsu would take way too long to explain, but it's interesting that he starts to get frustrated that he's always scared. During the fight, you can tell that despite saying he hates himself more than anyone, I think deep down he does love himself. He gets frustrated because he knows he can do better, he just is stuck making the same mistakes. All he wants is to help himself and others, and when he's not in his head, Damn, is he powerful. Okay, so the video has been going on for a long time at this point, and I think I've explained why this whole entire Mount Natagumo scene in Demon Slayer is possibly one of the best scenes in entertainment history, but what about that life lesson the scene teaches? Didn't I say in the beginning of the video that it can teach us a valuable lesson? I did, and that's what I'll use to end the video off. To end the video off, stand up for yourself and your loved ones. Stand up for your beliefs and trust your progression. Life is going to throw a lot of fear, obstacles, and a load of mental challenges at you. And that's okay. It's supposed to do that. And I'll even say that it's okay to feel scared and worrisome as long as you keep your eyes on the prize whatever that may be, and to keep you and your loved ones safe. If they would stand up for you, you should stand up for them. It's okay to feel frustrated and to cry. It shows that deep down you love yourself and you deserve better, and you know you can do better. It's easier said than done, but please just get out of your head and master your skills. Do it for yourself and your loved ones. And even not for your loved ones. Why not just do good things for other people? You never know what'll happen. You might have just saved another one's life. Search for what it is you want. And I'll repeat it. Look for what you truly want. Not what you kinda want, what you think you want, what others want for you. Because here's the thing. We all deep down inside know what it is that we want in this life. And you might just remember it if you take some time out of your day to search for it. But if not, I promise you'll discover it if you truly look for it deep down in your heart. Or maybe you'll see it from someone else and it'll inspire you, I don't know. It's okay to feel doubtful, but it isn't okay to give up. Fight for you, your loved ones, and like Zenitsu was told from Gramps, don't give up.